I wanted a companion piece to my Fossey preamp amp combo. I wanted to add a DAC to build a full-fledged integrated system for cheap. Some standalone DAC with engineering purely built to maximize this device as a DAC. So no preamp, no streaming, etc. And here it is, Neo Hippo DAC with ES Sabre 1938. A great DAC chip inside and for a very budget-friendly price. Will this DAC be any good? Let's find out. I am not that familiar with Neo Hippo, except for their amp switcher ET30, which was reviewed by many reviewers on YouTube back in the days. It's a very interesting and unique purpose and very cool looking device. But now we have this, let's call it bland looking small box, which looks like many other decks in this range. While it doesn't get any points for looks, I think it decently built with an aluminum body and a metal switches. It is a really nice to the touch body, giving a feel of quality and elegance. While it will not gain points or looks, as I said previously, I think in the utility department it will. Adding a screed or any other peripherals to the body would deter engineering from maximizing the sound coming out of this box. It is an all sound centered as it should be and the small body perfectly fits to be a discrete part of your system chain. It delivers good connectivity with a USB coaxial and optical, so the most common ways to connect have been checkmarked with this device. It will also cover your needs, handling up to 32 bits, 768 kHz, which is really ultra high decoding support from such a small device. So, on a grand scheme, you are covered. It is not something to blow you away, but it is certainly something that is really great to see at this price level. What actually interested me about this device is that it is not being covered by many reviewers, at least I think, and that it comes with almost the newest generation of ES Sabre 1938. I think only recently they have released 1939, but this should give an amazing results. The previous generation of this chip, the 1918, is one of the most commonly used chips in a lot of audiophile gear in budget level. So I'm quite used for that sound. For example, 6000A, etc. I liked how there is a focus on openness and clarity with this DAC. So having this DAC with a newer chip, I was mightily intrigued. Using the critically acclaimed EU Sabre patented 32-bit Hyperstream 2 DAC architecture and time domain jitter eliminator, the ES1938 delivers up to 128 decibels, a performance level that will satisfy the most demanding audio enthusiasts. And the distortion level is low as 0.00008%. But we all know that DAC's strength doesn't lie only in their architecture, but in the engineering inside the box, how well it communicates with the preamplifier and the rest of the components inside a box, how much it can preserve the neutrality before being exposed to current and how much it can remain distortion free. Being a separate, it already has a much more advantage compared to like integrated DACs, as this kind of separates are engineered separately from all the other components, making the output far cleaner and the noise floor far more lifted, which is always a great thing. I, I always says, if there is a one component that you can have as a separate, if you of course dislike separates, it has to be DAC. 
and the sound is great. It honestly is. I did a couple of A-B tests, mostly with WinPro Plus, with topping D10S, and just for measuring purposes with the big boy, the Denoflips RS II. But let's tackle first for who this deck is for, and the, its mightiest purpose is improving the sound of your devices. And it can do that magnificently. I think this is the greatest way for you to improve the sound of your audio system for cheap without buying a whole new components. If you have sources like CD player, like music streamers up to 500 euros or integrated amplifiers up to 700, 800 euros, this DAC will bring significant improvements to those sound of those devices. And you do all that by just adding this small device. And this is an approximate and can vary by device from device. But this is a quick and easy upgrade to the sound. Being so discreet and only focused on sound, it does a great to do so. Unfortunately, as it is a pure DAC without pre-amplifier, its purpose is a bit limited for like a desktop connectivity to your PC solution, but it could help a lot with a connection to your active speakers. Its purpose as an external DAC is always to make your sound structure better organized, to rise a dynamic scale to expose more details and to make sound more present. And it does all that great. The biggest star of this show is how it presents and cleans the midsection. It truly helps with decluttering the information and putting instruments in their place. It does that by raising the dynamic range of instruments, allowing them to separate more. And in that way, they are more rounded and palpable. Everything becomes more clear and vivid as it is far better organized and presented to the listener. It helps with opening the soundstage in that way also dramatically. Soundstage is more a combination of many different factors on how it will sound in a room, like uh, beginning with room properties, speakers, amp, and how well the deck places and organize instruments on that like soundstage, including all of the dynamic scale from deep bass to like high treble. But the soundstage was decent with this one. It is not a DAC you specifically buy to open the sound, but it does a decent to great job expanding the sound ever more. Oh, and don't let me forget that it helps with removing the noise and blackening your background. While it helps with the separation of instruments, it does make them far more clean and clear and overall presentation is far more audible. Also making all the instruments more present and forward to you. I think this DAC injects a little bit of energy into the mix and I think it does that by adding a decibels in treble. I think with A-B testings I could hear how the presentation is closer to me, how it expands more and I feel all of them more forward and a little bit more energized. Now, this is where this DAC also shows its true colors. Certain limitations, and now this is not a limitation that appears worse than cheap DACs, it is only limitations compared to DACs and where they can improve for next generations. And that is while the treble does a good job of making the presentation more present and forward, it also struggles with organizing, placing, and resolving the, like, the, the top end in some songs, mostly where there are pianos and acoustic guitars, and treble is a bit crude, a bit crude. I think it could shave more on top end and resolve it to be more manageable. Sometimes I miss details there, which I know exist, and I think it could be dynamically richer. All that could make a bit of a poise with speakers that are rich in treble, it will not do much in presenting, elevating, or just upgrading the high end of a dynamic scale. The similar thing is with the bass. It is a very neutral here. Your bass is going to be good if your speakers and amp are good, but unfortunately it will not do a good job to enhance it. 
Good techs know to add even more decibels and organize the sound to have more weight, attack, or more details. Here, everything is very neutral. While I was not happy with how this deck organized the treble, I was at least happy with how the treble separates more and is more present. But the bass is just neutral and maybe that is a good thing if you don't want DAC to fiddle with bass. And you are also satisfied with already with how it is. For better or for worse, it doesn't make the bass more bloated and bouncy. It serves with providing enough weight, details and scope to show you how much your speakers and amp provide. And maybe, most importantly, it doesn't stand outside of mids enough to not create this warm, veiled picture, but politely giving more room for clarity and precision. Which, when I look at it now, is maybe a great thing, really. Maybe this deck does good with just controlling and restraining the bass. And to me, if you ask me, all these kind of negative points I had for treble and bass are only points in comparison with more expensive decks, what more expensive decks does. Topping D10S, this is the one I had and I think is a great comparison to Neo Hippo. Short and sweet is both these both are great at their price level. Quality-wise, they're a bit different, but not something to feel fear of missing out if you choose one or the other, to be honest. Neo Hippo would be my choice though, only because it just clears the space and air in a mid-range a little bit better. It also creates a more present and forward presentation, which with certain songs made all the difference, uh, listening-wise. But Topping has a display, which is great. I love this place. And it has a better, more focused and detailed base. But just a little bit, to be honest. What you choose should be prioritized by looks, screen, and a bit better base. Using this with like Wimpro Plus, so I tested this against Wimpro Plus DAC, which is an AKM, and the benefit speaks for themselves enough. I love what it did with Vim sound. I love how it made everything so much clearer, like mids far more focused and a lot of benefits and pluses I mentioned in this review shine here. Vim is already a great streamer, but this just added a lot of things I said were not good in the review, which I did. You can watch my review here on YouTube, where I specifically said that mid-range of Vim is its biggest flaw. But here, this DAC really helps it. It expands the sound a bit more and makes the sound more separate and clean. This is the reason I said that this DAC makes everything sounds better, and it does, and is certainly a worthy buy to upgrade the sound of your system for cheap. Conclusion. I am very happy with this DAC. It will be an important part of my B system and it will improve the sound of my devices dramatically. From decluttering the mids, making the background more black, creating a better separation among instruments, these are all the highlights and the sudden improvements to your system. There is still some work in the treble and bass. And but they are serviceable and should not be used as a big minus in such a cheap price range. So make all your devices come to life again with this small device and just enjoy a bigger, cleaner pictures with happiness that such a small device brought so, so many improvements to your device and just enjoy sounds, enjoy music and be happy how now you can hear more and just how you can enjoy more of your gear. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to support me in any way possible, you can like this video. You can maybe subscribe to see more videos like this. And 
If you really enjoy this content, you can even donate on my Patreon page. Thank you and see you in our next video. Keep daydreaming. Bye.